I want to summon your senses and invite your intellect to the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, chapter number 13. Hebrews chapter 13, it is there that the Holy Spirit has highlighted for us this verse number 15. Hebrews 13, verse 15. Your Bible should read, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. I want to tag this text, you do not have the right to remain silent. You may be seated in the Lord's church. Would you look at somebody and tell them, you do not have the right to remain silent. American history has taught us that in 1621 European colonists had a feast with the Wampanoag Indian tribe and that feast was acknowledged as the first or one of the first Thanksgiving observations or celebrations in the then colonization of America. And 242 years later in 1863, the then president, Abraham Lincoln, made it official and declared a national day of Thanksgiving that would be honored and observed each November. There are some scholars and historians who challenge that historical fact and suggest to us that that time in 1621 was not the first observation of Thanksgiving in the colonization of America. For instance, there are those who cite that in 1665, in 1565 that is, a Spanish explorer had the same type of gathering with the Timucua tribe and they declare that that moment, that date was a day of thanksgiving to an almighty God. In December of 1619 there was another historical sighting that there were 38 British settlers who had a similar gathering with Native Americans and they cited that that was an observation and origin of thanksgiving. January of 1957, the Canadian government said that they would have a day to proclaim as a day of thanksgiving unto God, which would be the second Monday in October. In ancient times, the Egyptians, the Greeks, and the Romans all had feasts of observation to a god or gods for the benevolence of harvests in the autumn seasons. Now, while there is some historical challenge and inconsistency 
with the origin of thanksgiving what we can clearly conclude from all of this data is that whether you are Native American, Egyptian, Greek, Roman, Spanish, British, or African American, thanksgiving is a human response to the realization and recognition that our bounty and benevolence in the earth comes from God. Whether you are monotheistic or whether you are polytheistic, all humanity recognizes that the good that we have in the earth has its origin from a deity. The precedent that you and I have is that the God, the conviction, the Christianity that we subscribe to doesn't altogether deny polytheism. It just says that our God is superior. <laughs> the first 10 commandments to Moses, the first prescription of the 10 commandments in Exodus 20 verse three is, thou shalt have no other gods. Lord, I wish I had a church in here before me. While many other cultures acknowledge their deity, it is our resolve that ours is just bigger, better, and better. He is the El Elyon, the most high God. That every description of our God is not in the comparative, it's in the superlative. He is the highest God. And what makes him the highest God is he is the only one that was not created. Our God, ladies and gentlemen, is the uncreated creator of all things created. Every other God, somebody made him up. Somebody got to carry him around. Somebody got to hang him around your neck. Somebody got to carry him in your pocket. Somebody got to hang him around your rear view mirror and put him up on the tag of your window. But I don't need a God I got to carry. I need a God that can carry me. <laughs> I, I need a God that can hold me and can see all around me. I need a God that's above me, under me, around me, and in front of me and behind me who's got all authority over me and has all power above everything else that calls itself God. That's our claim that he is the most high God the highest of all gods the only one that was not created and therefore anything that was created was created by him he is the he who was is and forever will be who has no beginning and has no end he was never born because he was never created he'll never die because he was never born that's the God we serve and therefore, ladies and gentlemen, every expression of thanksgiving really recognizes, Kent Jordan, that there is a human recognition of divine involvement and divine interaction in human affairs. That the, the bounty and the benevolence that we experience comes from God. I don't know if your, 
your, your, your mouth is closed because your spirit is sour. But when you think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you, your soul ought to cry out. Now, it's not possible to have a crying soul and a closed mouth. Your mouth is an expression of your soul. Something on the inside of you ought to open your mouth when your soul considers the goodness and the benevolence of an almighty God. The anonymous writer of the book of Hebrews shares with us another reason to give God thanks which I want to suggest that by the time of this sermon is over you will be clear that it is the ultimate reason of giving God thanks it is the primary reason of giving God thanks and praise most of our praise unfortunately is for secondary causes the anonymous writer of the book of Hebrews says that there is a primary cause and the primary cause of praise allows for praise to never end. Here's what he says. By him. That, that, that's, that's, the, that's the whole sermon, right? Uh -huh. I'm going to try it one more time. This, 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 this sermon is in two words. By him. Uh, you don't like it put the, put the third word there therefore uh, therefore is there for a reason therefore is a term that indicates that there is a previous argument that's getting ready to come to a conclusion if this then this therefore you got to always know what the therefore is there for because it's there for a reason. It's establishing the conclusion of an argument. Therefore, by him, we offer unto God continually the sacrifice of praise. So we got to understand before we dive into this passage, what is so significant about him? You got a Bible? This is the Fellowship Bible Church. Uh, here's why. I, I, I'm going to just stay in the chapter. Uh, verse 5 of Hebrews 13 says that uh, we ought not to have our conversation to be contaminated with covetousness. And the B clause says because he has said he will never leave us Lord have mercy nor forsake us verse 5 tells us that Jesus is our security peek your face at verse 6 verse 6 says that he is our helper and because he is our helper what shall man do unto me verse 6 says that he is our support jump down to verse 8. Verse 8 says Jesus Christ the same yesterday today and forevermore. Verse 8 says he's our stability. Verse 5 says he's our security. Verse 6 says he is our support. Verse 8 says he is our stability. But verse 12 says Jesus shed his blood that he might sanctify the people outside the gate. Verse 8 says he's our sanctifier. Still don't know how to get happy. V verse 5 says he's our security. Verse 6 says he's our support. Verse 8 says that he is our stability. Verse 12 says that he is our sanctifier. Therefore, by him. I'm going to try it one more time for the slow section right here. Verse 5 says he's my security. Verse 6 says he's my support. Verse 8 says he's my stability. Verse 12 says I'm only sanctified because he sanctified me. Therefore, 
by him. I'm going to try it one more time. The reason why I ought to give him praise is because I got security with him. I got support with him. I got stability with him. And I got sanctification with him by him. That's reason enough. Give him glory. Let's, let the church say by him. All right. That word by him, it actually translates through him. <laughs> Y'all don't know how to get happy. But you ought to be thankful that you got some stuff that only comes by him. Because it only comes through him. John chapter 1 verse 3 says, by him were all things made. And without him was nothing made that was made. Verse 4 says, in him was life and that life was the light of men. Acts chapter 17 verse 20 says by him we live move and have our being 2 Corinthians 1 and 20 says by him are all the promises of God in him yea and amen I, I'm trying to tell you that everything that we get from God is through Jesus and that's enough to give him the glory and the thanks because that's our security, that's our sanctification, that's our stability, and that's our support. Therefore, he is the source from which all praises go. Uh, I, I'm trying to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you got to learn how to stop just shouting over stuff and start shouting over him. <laughs> he's giving you stuff to shout about, but the biggest gift he's ever given you, Lord have mercy, was him. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not, it's not good and it's actually sad to have your hands full of stuff on your way to hell. You drive the finest car. You live in the finest house. You got the finest man. You got the finest woman. You got a whole bunch of money and life is not going to get any better for you than what you got right now. Ladies and gentlemen, you can have the world and still miss heaven. If you don't have him. The, he, the, the, the whole thesis of the book of Hebrews is that this writer has documented for us the superiority and the sufficiency of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And because of his sacrifice for us, it is the, uh, the abolition of the entire sacrificial system that after Jesus Christ died, we have no more need for turtle doves and sacrificial lambs. We have no more need for any of the animals and the articles and all of those things and the utensils of the sacrificial system. It's done. It's over. Let me aggravate you, ladies and gentlemen. In the New Testament, there are no altars. The reason why there are no altars is because there's no more need for a sacrifice. I can't get no help here. You will not find any more altars in the New Testament because there's nothing else to kill after the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Here's what John said. John said, behold, the lamb of God that comes to take away the sins of the world. And therefore, there are no more priests. There is still a priesthood, but no more priests. There's no more, no more exclusive person necessary to go into the Holy of Holies and make sacrifice. Can I tell you why? 
Come here. Because under the old system, ladies and gentlemen, sacrifices could only happen on a certain day by a certain person at a certain time in a certain place. The priest had to go in, that's the certain person. On Yom Kippur, that's the certain day. With a certain sacrifice in the Holy of Holies, that's a certain place. And that took place once a year to cleanse the, the, the community of all of their sins. But now that Jesus has gone in, we don't have to do it on one day. Here's what the text says. We offer sacrifices of praise continually. You are a royal priesthood. And because you are a royal priesthood, you don't need somebody to go to God for you. You can get down on your own knees. Go to God for yourself. Look at somebody and tell them, I love my pastor. I love my man or woman of God. But I know how to pray for myself. I got my own prayer closet. Maybe if you had your own relationship with God, you wouldn't be so dependent on people who are going to disappoint you anyway. I wish I had a church around here. Just look at somebody and tell me I can get down on my knees myself. I know how to go to God myself. I got my own prayer life. I got my own sanctuary. As a matter of fact, by the time I get to church, I've already had church. I do this continually now. I know how to get to him continually. He is the source from our praise. Watch what the text says. J. Williams, watch what the text says. He says we got to do this continually, but we can't do it unless there is a sacrifice of praise. Now, I'm struggling with this uh, because under the old system to which the anonymous writer of Hebrews is making his comparative argument that Jesus Christ has killed this old system because he's the final sacrifice well under the old system the sacrifice was offered to God after it had died so ladies and gentlemen the word sacrifice is indicative of slaughter and death. But in this verse, sacrifice is a part of a noun phrase with praise. The sacrifice of praise. Still slow. Uh. In order to praise, you got to be alive. One term is the reality of death and the other one is the reality of breath. How do you put these two terms together when one speaks of death and the other one speaks of breath? Because if you have no breath, then you have death. If you have death, then you have no breath. This is a noun phrase that is a contradiction in terms. Lord have mercy. He says you got to have the sacrifice of praise. Well under the old system ladies and gentlemen the sacrifice did not praise because the sacrifice was dead. But after Christ the sacrifice is not a dead praise it's a living praise. Well if it's a living praise we should have got rid of sacrifice altogether. It should have said we ought to offer God praise. That's not what it says. It says we offer God the sacrifice of praise. Which means, Lenine, that something died in the praiser in order to get the praise out of the praiser. I'll shout myself since y'all don't want to get happy. In order to praise God, something had to die in the praiser in order to get the praise out. And your question to me is, Pastor, what died in order to get the praise out? Your preoccupation with yourself. 
See, in order to praise God, you got to get over your cuteness. You got to get over your clout. You got to get over your credit. You got to get over your degree. You got to get over your arrogance. You got to get over yourself and realize you ain't the ticket. God is the ticket. And whatever has happened, it didn't get from you. It came from God. Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, can you get over yourself long enough to give God a praise? Ah, uh, I still got some cute people around here and some conceited folk around here who too cute to give God praise. All right, if, 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 if you too cute, maybe your life need to get a little ugly in order for God to get a praise out of you. Maybe God need to stop being so good for you to give God praise. But if God has been good to you, you've got to get over yourself and realize if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, Would you look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, give me 10 seconds. I got to give God praise because I got to get over myself right now. I know it was my money, but God gave me the strength to make it. I know it's my mind, but if he had to keep my mind, I would have lost my mind. Anybody grateful that you got life long enough to get over yourself? David figured this out. The Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> I shall not want. He makes me lie in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I messed up one day and walked in the valley of the shadow of death, but he was with me. And when he got me out the shadow of death, he prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And then I made a decision, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever tap your neighbor and tell him neighbor get over yourself this morning you ain't that wonderful that you can't open your mouth and give him praise something got to die in the praise in order to get the praise out of the praise he says we got to offer him a sacrifice of praise continually I'm done y'all watch this and you got to do it with your lips <laughs> slept so hard here's how the verse reads we got to offer him the sacrifice of praise continually. That is with the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto his name. Let the church say, do it with your lips. That means you can't come in and shut your mouth. And your mask is not an excuse. I can't get no help here. Your computer is not an excuse. You ought to be at the house lifting your voice because that's where he fed you. That's where he healed you. That's where he blessed you. Your mask shouldn't muzzle your mouth. Your mouth ought to be open. Let the church say, give thanks. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me see if I can get out of here. Oh. Uh, he said we ought to do it with the fruit of our lips and give him thanks unto his name. There's a word that we, we, need, to, we, need, to, we need to pitch our tent there. Uh, it is the word thanks. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this word in the Greek is the word homologeo. Let the church say homologeo. I'm going to give you your Greek degree in the after church. I'll give you all your Greek degree. Let the church say homo legeo. Homo meaning same. 
Logeo meaning logic, spoken word, thought. Logos, logeo, same word. Same logic. The word actually means to speak the same thing or to speak in agreement. It is associated with the word or in conjunction with the word confession. When you go to court, if you are on trial and you have to take the stand, you're going to be giving your confession. And it may be facilitated by an attorney the attorney is asking you a line of questions that ultimately is trying to get you to agree with the attorney's argument. They're asking you some questions that's going to verify their argument. The questions are strategic and the questions are trying to get you to say things that confirm or speak the same thing as the attorney's argument. So a confession means to speak the same thing. <laughs> Who are you trying to speak with? You're trying to speak with the attorney. The attorney is asking you a line of questions to try to get you to give answers that are in agreement with their argument. Ladies and gentlemen, he says that giving thanks and giving praise to God is your confession and your agreement of God's goodness. Preach Tolan Morgan that whenever you praise God, you have come into agreement with His goodness and His grace in your life, and your praise is a confession of His benevolence in your life. Okay, you still missed it. Simply put, ladies and gentlemen, my praise is a statement of who did it. If anybody asks me, why am I praising God and why am I giving God thanks? It's because I'm trying to say through my actions and through my mouth that God did it. I'm not praising him for what the enemy did. I'm praising him for what he did. So whenever I praise God, it is my agreement towards the goodness of God. Therefore, if I'm not praising God, I am at least not acknowledging the goodness of God. And I hear you saying, Pastor, you know, I see these people in church, they dancing, they praising, they running, they speaking in tongues, they giving God glory, and it don't take all that. <laughs> all I can tell you is keep living. As a matter of fact, if you don't want to keep living, switch shoes with the praiser and see what kind of hell they've been through that God has brought them through. See what kind of miracles God has brought them through. See what kind of breakthroughs God has brought them through. You haven't been in any kind of trouble yet, but wait till the Lord allows hell to break out in your life and let him bring you through. I promise you, you're going to do all that and more. Would you look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, I refuse to be silent silent in the Lord's house because it's not possible for thanksgiving to be silent that's a contradiction in terms because when you're thankful Lord I wish I had some help here I said when you're thankful it ought to open your mouth it ought to clap your hands it ought to make you bring your head back and holler like God been good to you I keep trying to tell y'all some of y'all are louder about your sin than you are about the goodness of God. If you go to that casino church and hit you ain't going to be quiet about that. If we lock you in a room with your choice man. Or your choice woman. You ain't going to be quiet about that. 
Somebody bless you with a new job or a new car, stuff that can run out. You ain't gonna be quiet about that. But when you come to church, it don't take all that. There is no way I'm going to be louder about sin than I am about the goodness of God. There is no way I'm going to glorify stuff I shouldn't have. They're over giving God the glory when he's the most important thing that I got. Y'all lips ought to open and give God the praise for his goodness and his benevolence in your life but here's the ultimate reason you ought to praise him because if he never does it if he never blesses you with anything he died on the cross his blood was shed for the remission of your sins to give you the most important thing you got and that's eternal life and a relationship with God. I need about 20 of y'all. I'm going to make number 21 to just thank God for your salvation. Not your car, not your cribs, not your money. Your salvation. The blood of Jesus Christ washing your sins away to reconcile you unto God. That's the most important gift you got. When he saved you, he arrested you. I said when he saved you, he arrested you. And y'all already know, when you get arrested, you got to read you your rights. I want to see if you saved in here. Because if you saved, you do not have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used to glorify God. If you need an attorney, the court has already given you one. For our Father has an advocate that when we sin, we have an advocate with the Father who is the propitiation of our sins. Now let everything I said, let everything. <laughs> Just tell somebody to tell neighbor, we ought to join in the praise right here. <laughs> and tell them, neighbor, <laughs> you ought to give God a praise <laughs> and always be thankful <laughs> because he has done great things for you. <laughs> Have I got a witness here? <laughs> the Bible says yeah that when they open their mouths they agree toward the goodness of God that my praise is an agreement Lord that God has been good he been good to me have I got a witness here in the bond to hear have made up in your mind that you will not be silent because you got so much to thank God for I said you got so much to thank him for I'm gonna see if you commit it to making up in your mind that whenever I got the opportunity I am going to open my mouth and give him glory I'm going to see will you do it would y'all do me a favor and grab your Bible I said do me a favor and grab your Bible put the Bible in your left hand and put your right hand on the Bible whether you got it on your phone or got it in your hand put your Bible in your left hand put your right hand on your Bible and let me ask you a question do you swear to tell the truth 
with the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I want you to respond by saying we do. Then I got some questions for you. Who woke you up this morning? Who healed your body? Who brought you a long way? Who washed your sins away? Your answer ought to be God did it. I'm trying to find who in here is ready to tell the truth. The truth is, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, did he heal your body? Do you got anything to be thankful for? Can I ask you a question? Who saved your soul? Can I ask you a question? Who washed your sins away? Can I ask you a question? Who do you thank every day for daily loading you with his benefits? The answer is God. God did it. Do I have anybody here that's got the right answer? If you're going to tell the truth, tell everybody that the Lord did it. Tell everybody I've got to open my mouth and give him glory. And i got a witness here. I've got to open my mouth and give him glory. Look at somebody. Tell a neighbor, you are under oath to tell the truth. Now let the redeem, I said let the redeem of the Lord say so. I said let the redeem of the Lord say so. If he been good to you, say so. If he raised you up, say so. If he blessed your body, say so. If he kept your mind, say so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, tell somebody. I said, come on and tell somebody. I'm thankful for Jesus. I'm thankful for Jesus. I've got to give him praise because he's been that good to me. When I consider all that he's done for me, I can't come in the Lord's house and sit like I'm watching a movie. I've got to open my mouth and give him praise in the bounty here grateful that God has been good to you I said God has been good to you if he been good to you be good to him I said if he been good to you be good to him by opening your mouth and blessing his name because I will Bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. Yeah! Oh Lord! Ah! I need y'all to do me a favor. Just look at everybody around you. I said, look at everybody around you. And just tell them, neighbor, I gotta praise him right now. Cause he's my security. 
He's my stability. He's my rock in a weary land. Anybody glad that is Jesus still working out? He kept your children, kept your family, kept your mind. Now take your hands and lift them up and give him glory. Open your mouth and give him glory. If you need some space, find you some space and give him glory. Let everything, let everything, let everything that's got prep. Said, ain't he all right? Yeah! 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 yeah. who refuse to be silent. You're not letting your mask shut you up. You're not letting the band shut you up. Because you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. I need to hear somebody. That ain't a shame to open your mouth. Roll your head back and holler like you've been good. Lucky like been good. Yeah. 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 Hey. That's for what he's all. Is anybody in here believing God to do something in your life before 2021 ends? You believe in God to do something in your life before 2021 ends? Well, see, if you really believe it, you got to already see it done. You got to see it done in the spirit. And because you see it done in the spirit, you're not going to wait till you get it to praise him. You're going to give him a faith praise right now. I need about 10 of y'all that ain't ashamed to get over yourself. You ain't ashamed to get over yourself and say, Lord, I got to praise you for what's getting ready to come my way. I got to give you glory for what's getting ready to come my way. Hey, bro! 
way. This is what's on the way. take all that it take all that and more that's just how good God's been to me somebody open your mouth and give him thanks everybody your praise is a statement that God did it your praise is a statement that God did it hallelujah Your praise is a statement that God did it. And your praise comes into agreement with the work of the Lord. Hallelujah. Clap your hands if you love him, everybody. 